In this video, I will demonstrate to you the automated process discovery capabilities of Apromore. I will do so using a real-life event log of a manufacturing process. I will start by importing this event log into the Apromore workspace by uploading it. Originally, this event log is in comma-separated value CSV format. It will be imported by a Promores CSV importer, which automatically detects the types of every attribute and tries to guess which column corresponds to the case identifier, which it successfully did here, which columns correspond to the activity, which column corresponds to the resource, in this case, the machine that performs a given activity in the factory, which one corresponds to the start, and the end timestamp. And note that in general, I only need an end timestamp to be able to discover a process. But if I have the start timestamp, I can do more detailed analysis. And then, in addition to these columns, there can be a certain number of domain specific attributes. In this case, for example, the work order quantity, the part description, and the worker ID, which is the identifier of the worker who operated the machine that performed this activity. I am now ready to upload the event log into a Promores workspace. Having the event log already in a Promores workspace, I can discover the process by simply double clicking on this file, which will take me to, by default, to the uh, process discover plugin of a Promore. The process discover of plugin of Apromore shows me what we call a process map. And a process map consists of activities, like for example here an activity turning and milling, and directly follows relations between activities. In this case, for example, I have a directly follows relation from turning and milling machine 10 to stress relief, and I have a directly follows relation back which basically means that there is a loop between these two activities. Therefore, a Promore allows me to see where there is a rework in the process. A Promore also shows me the frequency of each activity, in this case, the number of cases in which this activity is performed. So, for example, I see the stress release is performed in three cases. I can see other frequency statistics, like for example, the total number of times that this activity was performed. For example, turning and milling machine 10 was performed in total 149 cases, which means that in some cases it gets repeated. Uh, I can also see the average uh, number of times that this activity occurs per case. This particular event log has 225 cases, and this activity uh, appears uh, 66, 0.66 times per case, which basically roughly means it occurs uh, more than 100 times. I can also see here at the top other statistics, the number of cases, the number of distinct pathways in the process, also called case variants in the process mining terminology, the number of events, in this case almost 10,000 events that have been recorded in this event log, and the number of activities in this process, which is 55 in this case. And I can also see some temporal statistics to the right, such as, for example, the average case duration, also known as cycle time. What I am seeing here on the screen is not the full process map. By default, a Promore will abstract the process map and only show about 10% of the arcs in this process map. Using the abstraction sliders, I can adjust the level of details at which this process is being displayed. For example, I can, if I want to see every single directly follows relation between activities in this process, I can push the arc slider to 100%. And what I will see is an amazing spaghetti, where 
I can do basically what it's telling me is that I can go from any activity to any activity. All possible imaginable pathways are being taken in this process. And this is something we observe very frequently in practice. Real life processes are messy. And trying to understand them, to comprehend them in their totality, is beyond what we can achieve as human beings. Therefore, we have to choose the right level of abstraction so that we can see enough relations between activities, but we can still analyze what is happening inside. And I can do that by adjusting the percentage of nodes that are, that are being displayed. For example, I can focus on the 50% most frequent nodes. And between these nodes, I can adjust the percentage of directly follows relations. Importantly, a promoter will always ensure that whatever level of abstraction I choose, every activity in the process map is on a pathway from the start event in this case to the end event in, in this other case. In addition to allowing me to see the process map, a promoter also allows me to see a BPMN model. For that, let me go back to the case frequency as the uh, frequency statistics shown in every activity. Let me set the percentage, leave the percentage of nodes as 50% and set the percentage of arcs as 50% so that I'm seeing basically half of the nodes and half of the arcs that I can see. At this level, in the process map, the process looks quite messy. We can put a little bit more of order into this process by using the BPMN view. For that, I just select the BPMN view in the visualization settings in Apromore. And what I'm going to see is that in addition to showing me the activities, like for example here, churning machine 8 and the control flow relations, I can also observe in the BPMN view gateways. And it's, this somehow makes it easier to see where are the repetitions in the process, like here, but also where are the decision points in the process. And in addition, using, by seeing the process in Apromore, using the BPMN view, I can also observe what are the points in the process where some activities are being executed in parallel or in any order. This is visualized by means of parallel gateways, like the gateway shown here. This parallel split gateway, for example, is telling me that at this point in the process, I start two parallel branches. In one of these parallel branches, I execute turning and milling machine 4, and sometimes I repeat this activity. And in the other branch, in parallel to this one, I execute another activity called turning and milling machine 5. And in this way, I, can, I am able to see uh, what are the parallel split and the synchronization points in my process, and that gives me a complementary view with respect to what I can get using the process map. Given that I have discovered the BPMN process model, I can save that process model in the workspace by clicking on Save BPMN. And that will put the corresponding uh, BPMN model on the Apromore workspace so that I can later reuse it, for example, in order to uh, animate or simulate this uh, business process using the other plugins in Apromore. Um, I would also like to show that in Apromore, using the abstraction settings, I am not only able to focus my attention on the most frequent activities and pathways, but I can also focus my attention on the most uh, infrequent activities and pathways. And this is very interesting, for example, when I do outlier analysis, when I, can, I want to see the anomalies in my process. For that, let me go to the process map view and let me change the ordering in the abstraction settings, which by default tells me that arcs should be deleted from least frequent to most frequent. I will turn it around and I will, see, and I will say that I want to filter the nodes and the arcs starting from the most frequent and then leaving the least frequent arcs. And let me leave the, keep the 50% most frequent, most infrequent nodes, and let me keep 
the 10% most infrequent arcs between these nodes. And then I will be able to see some pathways that are very rarely taken in this process. For example, only in one case in this process, we start with turning machine one. And this is followed on one occasion by turning machine 15, although this activity appears in other cases, something, something that I will be able to inspect more in details if I started to move the abstraction settings and to incorporate a more a frequent a, a arcs into my process. Before concluding, I would like to show you that you can also change the perspective that you use to, to observe your process. By default, a promore discovers a process from a, an activity perspective. In other words, the, the boxes or the nodes in the process map corresponds to activities. But I can also change to another perspective. Very typically, it makes sense to also analyze the process from the perspective of the human workers, in this case, the worker IDs. When I do this, a promoter shows me a, a process map in which the activities are not, no. When I do so, a promoter shows me a process map in which the activities are now a, individual workers in this process, represented by an identifier, and the directly follows relations represent handoffs between one worker and the next worker in the process. And sometimes I see back and forth handoffs as shown here. As before, I can adjust my level of details so that I can see less arcs or less nodes, in this case, less workers and less handoffs. And this concludes my demonstration of the automated process discovery capabilities of Apromore.